there are people on the right that are willing to speak some uneasy truths that people on the left just won't acknowledge. And as long as you're not willing to acknowledge something that's true, you're going to lose to the people that are willing to acknowledge what's true. And I think that red pillars will make some observations that are true, and then they get wild with it. And they go off into these crazy places where it's like, I understand where you're starting from, mm -hmm. but the places that you go, you, you could go in such a better direction. Is Andrew Tate good for, for the guys or not? I'd say absolutely not. I think that the idea of masculinity and success and fulfillment that's being sold by a lot of people on the right, I think leads to the same type of spiritual wasteland that you're trying to like pull these young men out of, I would say. Like when I look at somebody like Andrew Tate, or even like for you guys, or and anybody that talks about red pill stuff, it always feels like your big markers for success are how how many women can you get? How much money can you make? What kind of cars do you drive? And at the end of the day, I just, I don't know how old you guys are, but like when I think back to the things I've had in my life, like I don't like remember the third, you know, new iPhone I got. I don't remember like when I got my new car, like how it was cool for like a week, but like there are memories that you make with other people. There are things that you achieve or accomplish in your life. For me, maybe stuff related to music, maybe stuff related to gaming when I was in esports. Like these are the standout memories that I have, but I never hear anybody in like the Red Pill Society building towards that. It always feels like they're building towards like the most hollowed existence that you possibly could have as a man that gets like signed off by mainstream consumer society. You've applied that a lot to me, but I've never even really talked about that. And it, sure. even if I do, I want the ability to buy those things. It's not those things are going to make me happy. I just want to have the power to not be restricted by anything. I guess the, the argument that I always make is that if you spend all of your life trying to get the capability to have everything, right? Like a man who spends his whole life on the mission, once that mission is fulfilled, he has nothing. Because your whole life you've just spent trying to get stuff, right? And, and you haven't worked on building relationships, building friendships, accomplishing something real. The best type of advice you get from red pills is at least working out as long as you're doing it for yourself and not to impress a chick but like because building your body means something so right? you don't you think we should tell people to like, get money i don't know i don't think that's that important i think that there are like upgrades to your life you can make if you're making fifteen thousand a year and you live with your mom and dad yeah you need to up your money of course but like if you've got a decent job and and i've seen this as a millennial there's a lot of people from my generation who are sitting in their apartment making one hundred forty thousand a year doing work from home who hate themselves. They have no friends except for the ones that they see light up on Discord. They have no hobbies except for the 4,000th game of League of Legends they play for the day. And they have like no fulfillment in their life. They have nothing. And these are the types of people that go online like, how do I meet girls? How do I meet friends? Like, why is it that I've hit every big marker in my life, but I'm miserable? And I think that that void isn't being answered by anybody, I think, right now. So Destiny, do you believe in the hero's journey? Like the Greek archetype or whatever? Yeah. I mean, I believe it's a story and to some extent it's applicable to our lives. Yeah, of course. So to me, from what I see Andrew doing, he's giving you the hero story. He's been through hardship. You know, he was poor, not successful. He worked his way up. He's saying, you know what? If I can do it on some level, you can too as well. Would you agree on that or no? With these guys, okay? Mm. These guys are on the Titanic and there's one lifeboat that can hold 400 people and there's 10,000 people on the deck and they're like, everybody can get in this boat. That's not true. Anybody could get in the boat, but not all 10,000 of them are getting in, okay? When you've got like a podcast where guys are talking about here's how you become a millionaire doing this or that or that. Yeah, maybe there's like some percentage of your audience could do it, but 98% of these guys are going to fail. And we everybody knows that from the dawn of any multi-level marketing, any online type of advertising, any like encouragement to like get rich doing these things. Like these goals are for 98% of people totally unattainable. Can anybody do it? Probably. Can everybody do it? Absolutely not. A lot of people on the left, for whatever dumb reason are really scared of self-improvement. Mm. Like I'm reading articles from the New York Times saying that like, you know, workout culture has been taken over by the right. Why the f would the right have a monopoly on improving your body? What a stupid thing. <laughs> Meanwhile, I go to the left and I'm seeing like health at every size. And I'm like, oh, well, that's why me, I guess, you know, I, I genuinely wholeheartedly believe if you're fat, it's your and fall and you deserve zero sympathy. The thing is, is that like the core of that messaging is correct. You should love your body and that should be the big drive to improve it. Even if you are overweight, you can still love yourself. You don't have to hate yourself. And that should be like the big drive that's pushing you back towards being a healthy person. But somehow, somewhere along the way that got convoluted or warped into, well, you're healthy and you love yourself and we can't be having any problems with ourselves if we love ourselves. So if you love yourself, nothing can be wrong with you. Therefore, you're perfect the way you are and then don't work on anything. And that's what's happened with so many of these left-leaning narratives is that they start off, I guess, kind of like the right ones where like the central idea idea, I think is good. Those reasons for why people are in the areas they are suddenly become justifications or rationalizations to never improve anything. Agreed. Mm -hmm. And yeah, now the explainer for why you are where you are has become the handicap or the crutch that's preventing you from succeeding. There's a quote, just because one side errs too far, does it really follow that the other side couldn't be erring too far as well? And that's kind of how I view it. Like I, the left has fucking ran away for sure, but that doesn't mean that the right has the correct answer on everything so you're too. in the middle. If you were born middle class and you're middle class your whole life, you didn't accomplish Loser. You showed up to life every day and you did fine. You went to school, you went to college and you got a job. And that's great. But those same people that started middle class and ended up middle class will look at people that are lower class and these people mm. will stay lower class and they'll look down on them. And it's like, wait, hold on. You didn't improve your lot in life at all. You stayed the same the whole 
time. Why would you look down at a guy, you know, who's a, who's making 24K a year who came from a family of people making 24K a year? It's not like you're a millionaire now and you had every right to be, right? Because if you were born middle class in America, in the United States of America, the fucking world is at your fingertips. People on the right will say some stupid shit like, yeah, I think family is really important. And, you know, like my grandpa, my great grandpa, and shit, like, you know, the contributions they made to my parents, that really helped me in life. And then they'll turn around and say some shit like, I don't think Jim Crow matters. That was in the 60s. It's like, bro, this family doesn't have a house because they weren't allowed to live in this part but of the we city. Aren't saying that. A lot of stuff has changed in the world with regard to technology. Everybody on the left wants to blame like the patriarchy and racism and then people on the right want to blame the feminization of men or f feminism or whatever. I, I think that a lot of our lives have fundamentally changed in ways that people aren't even aware of in an incredibly short amount of time. When I was in school and Facebook came out, back then online only existed to augment your real life. But at some point, past 15 years, it became real life. It became real life. Yeah. I don't use Facebook or Discord to connect with real life friends. I use Facebook and Discord to get friends. That's not the same thing. But because it plays into these like really bad, I would say evolutionary traps that make us feel good, we keep pursuing it even more. A really good example of this, I think work from home is probably a really bad idea. That being locked in your room, like doing your work on your computer screen, you like, you wake up, you're working, then you get off and you play League of Legends and then you talk to people on Discord and then you go to sleep and you repeat that for 365 days. That has to rot the mind. More than feminism, more than patriarchy, more than anything else. Technology has, it's hurt men and benefited women. Now with the advent of Instagram, the advent of online dating apps, women get more opportunities now than ever before. So what happens is, is that a majority of men now aren't even considered as suitable candidates. What's happened is, is women have stepped into more and more traditionally masculine roles. Mm -hmm. They're earning more money. They're handling their they're stable. There's more to them than just looking pretty. But men are not allowed to step in traditionally feminine roles. Now they've taken the masculine role of like, hold on, I got a career. I'm working. I'm smart. I get to handle my. Shit. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, can I just like be somebody that like take care of the household? Like, let me like cook and clean. Shit. No, you're a fucking loser. Wait, hold on. But that's what you did 40 years ago. But now that women have stepped into the masculine role, they're looking at all these men. And, you know, studies show this. Women are earning more and more and more and more, but they still won't date down socioeconomically. They yep. still won't date a poor guy. And it's like, well, hold on. If you are a man and you find a woman, oftentimes this is going to be the first person you can actually connect with on an emotional level <laughs> in your entire fucking life. Because you don't connect like that with your bros. You don't connect I mean, like that with guys and you have conversations. She doesn't need a man for that emotional connection. She can get a lot of emotional connections from her friend group. I want to say like 38 or 37% of women are okay being single. One of the reasons why that happens and this is where i will attack a lot of like the hyper masculine stuff that red pill sell is men are horrible friends to each other when you listen to two women talk she might go through some and she's like, man, I got this going on. This is how I feel about this. And they're talking to each other, they're bouncing their feelings up. They have like these, they have, they have these really rich and fulfilling friendships with each other. Women? Yes, they do. When you listen to two men talk to each other, okay, this guy might, this mother might be ready to kill himself. And he's like, John, what's up? He's like, not that much, man. How are you doing? <sighs> yeah, you know. And then like, like, it's like, what the fuck is happening? Guys suck at talking to each other. We do. The emotional connection that we have with each other I is completely. absolutely abysmal. But guys are so dumb. They'll sit there in the friend zone for decades and give away free attention and get used and not even understand their value. It is so socially acceptable to talk about power dynamics in relationships when they benefit the man. Nobody talks about them when they benefit the women. That really bothers me. Like everybody will talk about the fuck zone. You know that girl wants to date you and here you are just having sex with you. That's manipulative. Piece That's you're a piece of shit. Yep. And then it's like, oh, okay. Well, you've got this guy that you've got giving you like wake up calls on Saturday, Sunday morning that you wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. Okay. And this guy like walks your dog. Like, how are you not abusing the fuck out of this dude? If anything, at the very least, zone girls are just getting physically. This guy's soul is getting by you. Okay. <laughs> you are rotting this man from the inside out. Let him go. Okay. Free this poor man from his like servitude because holy fuck. How important is freedom to you and why? I don't think freedom is very important to many people at all. I think people like the idea of freedom. There's an interesting book that was written on this called The Paradox of Choice. The reality is when you actually put more choices in front of people, they actually get more stressed out about picking the wrong thing. That's yeah. facts. They did um, that with ice cream flavor. And you yeah. can even feel that if you go to a restaurant and they give you a menu with like 50 things. That's some stressful shit. Like, people want to be able to pursue the things that make them happy. That doesn't always mean you need to be able to choose between 500 things. Sometimes it does, but not usually. I think people just want to be able to carve out paths in their life. You need the freedom to be able to choose like the job that you want or like to be able to have a family or to raise kids or, or that type of thing. So I don't think that having a ton of freedom is necessarily the most important thing, but you have to at least have to feel like you have the freedom to make the choices you want. Femininity and masculinity should be balanced in every person, right? Like even in your hormones, like men produce some estrogen, women produce some testosterone. Like, I, like it's part of you that you should be able to, as a strong man, have some feminine traits or as a strong woman, have some masculine traits. Like I think it's good to be balanced. I think when you shut off those things completely, because you think that like being a man means you have to be the most extreme, unemotional person ever. That's how you get people coming back from like, Vietnam or Iraq that are like PTSD of the 
fucking brain because they feel like they can't open up or talk to anybody about anything. I think that it is a weakness as a man to be a unable to like address or handle or deal with your feelings in an open and honest manner. To not be able to do that and to feel like you've got to lock everything down and not process those things. I think that's a person that, ha that has a weakness that they need to address. I agree. I think the only thing is, is that you need to open it with other men that understand your uh, struggle and your experience. That's another reason too why like I am not a fan of opening up to women. They definitely have sympathy and not empathy because they don't understand the male experience. And not only do they not understand the male experience, they don't give a about the experience. Care. They've come on this podcast and we've had discussions about this. Most women don't even know that like one third of guys is either a virgin or hasn't had sex in the past year. But I will say on the flip side too, guys are holy f brain dead when it comes to understanding some of the fears or struggles that women have sometimes too. Really? Like, you, yeah, like guys what? will say stupid shit like, oh, like I'm meeting for a date. Why can't I just pick you up from your house? Like why can't you just come back to my place or whatever? It's like, bro, you weigh 80 pounds heavier than this woman. You could fucking this in an instant if you wanted to.